Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 2020 full moon reading for you. Now, this reading will last from full moon to full moon, so from June 5th to July 5th, all right? So, yeah, let's dive into this reading, but if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So I'm going to be showing you what the tarot has to say, then layering the Queen of the Moon cards and the Moonology cards on top of the tarot to really give Luna a voice of her own during this time. And I have everything laid out right here for you guys, even your spirit animals for these months. Okay, so I'm going to be moving your Moonology and your Queen of the Moon cards over to the side and taking the tarot. And let's see, how will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So at the heart of everything, we have the three of waters, the three of cups. You're crowned by the two of air, the two of swords. I'm equating these all back to the Rider Waite Smith deck. Then we have the two of fire, the two of wands. So the repeat of the number two here and the progression to three, from, well, the digression from, from three to two, it really shows me here that communication, people are, are going to be really important to you during this time. It's also the visionary moon. So you're going to have a very creative side of you to really embrace during this time. Yeah, the uh, fortune's wheel here, the wheel of fortune is everything's changing. Things are doing a 180, life's doing a 360. You know, you're really starting to see things changing for you and it's a completion of a cycle. The four of earth, the page of air and air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, the world, I love that. The messenger of earth, this is the knight of of pentacles in the Rider Waite Smith deck. This is you shining through. Five of air, five of swords, nine of water, nine of cups. Right. Let me just move this over a bit so that you can see everything better. Awesome. Okay, so what I love about this is that I'm really seeing that you're opening doors for yourself that were once closed, but you do have some blockages here to, to move from, and you have two, three, four, which I really like a bit because you're, you're progressing. It's just kind of like, yep, you got this, and you're going to keep on going. And it's like you tackle one thing after another after another. And I know you're going to sit there, Taurus, and say, I'm done tackling. I'm tired. I, I just want things to be easy. And you know what? I totally get that. But there is such a beauty to you, and there's such a power to you that if everything was laid out on, at your feet that you want, you would still be striving for more. You'd still be kind of like pushing the envelope. And so here, you're going to see that emotionally, spiritually, personally, you're going to find that mentally, emotionally, and prosperly, all right, you're going to be finding that you do have the tools kind of set at your feet and you're breaking boundaries with those tools. You're really moving yourself forward to embrace love. You have the countdown from 10 to nine. You have that sense of, of seeing things differently and embracing what you love, but you may not know that you're truly embracing what your heart wants, what you desire right away. It might take you just a little bit to really, to really fall into alignment with that vision of where you want to be and what you desire. So just know that about yourself for this time. You're also a fighter during this time, not saying that you have to fight for anything, but I am saying that you, you're the knight, you're this action, this person who moves forward. And with the Sagittarius moon, this is so absolutely brilliant for you because this moon is going to be astoundingly powerful. It's during a lunar eclipse, you know, from full moon to full moon. We have, you know, a lunar eclipse on the 5th of June. We have a lunar eclipse on the 5th of July. And then on the 21st of of June, which is the new moon, we have a solar eclipse. So this is a very powerful time. We've moved out of this, the four supermoons that we've had in a row now into lunar eclipses, which is just absolutely amplifying the energy that is around us. So here, I'm just going to jump straight away into the Sagittarius energy because you are really looking at what you want. You see how Sagittarians are represented by a bow and arrow. You're taking aim on what you desire and you're going after it. That's why being a knight during this time 
absolutely A++. It says look at the bigger picture. You're looking at the bigger picture of what you want. You're taking aim at what you desire. And here, the moon is called the hot moon, and it talks about extremes. You might be feeling things you know, very, very passionately, one extreme or another, all the time during this moon, which isn't exactly where you like to be. You're an earth sign energy Taurus. You like things to be rather steady. So here for you, your extremes aren't going to be as, let's say, passionate as a fire sign extremes. Though if you do have fire sign energy in your chart, it will exacerbate that, that side of your personality. So here with this, with this hot moon, you are kind of being pushed out of your comfort zone just because you're seeking and you're telling the truth of what you want and you're starting your hero's journey. And I'm just seeing it kind of like make you sweat. It's like, oh, can I do this? Am I moving forward the right way? Don't overanalyze it. Look at what you want. Look at what you need from your life and then jump and go for it. Because with the full moon eclipse, we have conclusions are within reach. You are going to reach your goals. You're starting the hero's journey. And every time the hero's journey is started, you know, for anybody, you feel like a fool. And that's what the fool shows us at the beginning of the tarot. It shows us that, you know, we have infinite possibilities ahead of us, but until we claim our power and our purpose, we can feel foolish, we can feel overwhelmed, or people will mock us. And, and that's okay, you know, kind of like, let them do them, let them be the mocking, the mockers, the doubters, you know, the, the people who don't believe and let you embrace your heart, your soul, your passion, yourself, and create your reality. Because you have here the full moon, which is power and a surrendering to the divine. And that's what you're doing. You're embracing your power and you're surrendering to divine prosperity. You're surrendering to the God's head within you. And as you do so, you're breaking limits. You're moving yourself forward. You're claiming what you desire. And that really shifts things for you because you do have, you know, you've had at your roots vampiric energy that has kept you from your prosperity. You have here with the three of waters, which is how I've always read it, is you know, somebody who you trusted and who was supposed to have your back. This was a person that you thought, oh, this person has me, you know, gets me, understands me. It could be, you know, somebody who was just supposed to have your back, like a parent. It could be a teacher. It could be a former lover or a lover who, you know, you just have been betrayed by. And so here, as you're looking at things, there is the sense of new beginnings coming forward because you're claiming your power from others. And that's going to be a very powerful shift to you because in the Farmer's Almanac, the, the hot moon that the Queen of Moon, the Queen of Moon, yeah, the Queen of the Moon says, the June moon is, is the strawberry moon. It's also historically known as the honeymoon. So here it is, it is a moon of sweetness and you're really utilizing that sweetness because you have that sensual nature and you have this astoundingly kind heart. Taurus that you're really utilizing at this time and it's going to open up new beginnings for you it's going to have you move from one world to another but it's also going to have you walking between the two extremes of your soul of yourself and of your personality the new moon is in cancer and it says you and your loved ones are safe which I mean especially during this time is there not a better you know statement to be had you and your loved ones are safe and so here in the new moon there's a safety there's a security around you it doesn't mean to go do anything foolish. It does mean to embrace the prosperity of your soul and what you love and those that you love. Because here a new start is coming and you can feel it. You can feel it because you're pulled that way forward. You're pulled to that idea. You're pulled to that idea. And as you do so, you move into the full moon in Capricorn on the 5th, oh goodness, on the 5th of July. So on the 5th of July, you move into a steadying, stabling earth sign energy, which you're very comfortable in that energy and with that energy around you. And it says here, and the end of a tough cycle approaches. And that is just so beautiful because I mean, globally, yes, we've had this tough cycle, right? And personally, you've had tough cycles and you're seeing yourself move away from this energy here that has drained you. I see it as vampiric energy with the four of earth, the four of pentacles, where it's like somebody has, you know, latched onto you and is draining your power, All right? So here with the four of earth, it can be somebody, it can be something. It's just like a leech sticking onto you and it's, it's draining you dry. And you're like, no more, no more. I'm moving forward. It can be changing a mindset. It can be, you know, just sitting there and saying, I see this person, I see this situation, because you're going to be stepping into the end of a tough cycle 
and the beginning of change with the thunder moon of, of July. And traditionally, in the Farmer's Almanac, this is called the buck moon or the stag moon. And so what I love about the stag moon is that stags are representative of, of power and majesty. You know, that's why in Bambi, Disney's Bambi, you know, he is, his father rules over the forest because he is a king. And so here, and he represents a king. So here you have the change coming forward as you represent and as you embrace your majesty. And as you embrace your majesty, you move towards the spirit animals of this time. Now for June, I love the spirit animals of June. The spirit animals are the deer and the eagle spirit. Now the deer spirit is, it says here, bring a gentle touch. And the deer spirit is gentle, but not defenseless. Okay, it is strong and brave when need be. You know, you don't have to sit there and fight every battle. And you're not even going to have the inclination to. There's also a sense of natural beauty being a part of you. Finding joy within nature. And also kind of letting your hair down and letting yourself show you as you. And not sitting there and saying, oh, well, I have to be absolutely, you know, decked out perfect every single time. Unless that's who you naturally are. And then just let that shine. There is a sense here of embracing your natural self. And as you do so, you are also embracing a degree of innocence, an innocence of soul, an innocence of personal desire. And this leads you to the eagle spirit. And what I love is that, you know, a deer is a herbivore. The eagle is a carnivore, so plant eater, meat eater. And one is, you know, one is a hunter and one isn't. So here you're going to have, again, that dual nature of yourself come forward, that sense of just wanting a gentle, peaceful existence, you know, do your own thing, chop on the grass, you know, just be happy kind of thing. And then with the eagle spirit, it's like you want to fly high, you seek out your prey, you go after what it is that you want. So you're going to have to honor both sides of you during this time. And yeah, and that's kind of like one of the choices that you're going to, to be making for yourself, but also with the eagle spirit. What it shows here is that an eagle is the bird that can fly the highest of all the other birds, right? So here, it's a sense of spirit has your back. So the eagle is man's connection with the divine because of how high it can soar and how close to the heavens it can get. Now, it is also all birds of prey are the best sight hunters out there. And we ourselves, they're second, we're, they're first and we're second. We as human beings, we are apex sight hunters. And so with an eagle, it's saying spirit is a better sight hunter than you. Spirit can fly higher than you. So know that spirit has your back because it's better at it than you are. And so that's a power that you're really going to be embracing here. It's kind of like, I know spirit has my back and can see things and can embrace things more beautifully, more profoundly than I myself can. This gives you courage to look ahead. And this brings to you a sense of honesty and thoughtful and thoughtfulness that really guides you. And as you're embracing this, it then leads you to the July spirit animals. Now, for July, I have to say, to be completely transparent, I have none of them in my cards. So I had to kind of have substitutes come into play. The July spirit animals are the woodpecker spirit and the salmon spirit. So standing in for the woodpecker spirit, because unbeknownst to me, till just like a little bit ago, the woodpecker spirit is profoundly powerful till doing my notes for this reading. It is profoundly powerful and it has a lot of the same energy as the bear spirit because it is a protector of those who cannot protect themselves. And so that's where the bear spirit comes into play. And it says, take time out, take time out to look at what you truly desire because the woodpecker spirit seeks to rekindle the passion found in truth. And that's going to be one of the ways that this is such a visionary time for you because you are reconnecting with your truth. And then it leads you to the hummingbird spirit because again, the hummingbird spirit has such strength to it that I thought, okay, I need a winged representative here. And a hummingbird can actually take down an eagle, which I think is completely cool. So here it says, be here now. So take time out and be in the present because you're going to see kind of like the, the god Junus in Roman mythology. Okay, and that's what actually January is named after the god Junus is that he looked at the beginning. He's the god of beginnings and ends, right? So he's usually depicted as having two faces. So we'd have one face facing forward, one facing behind. And 
there is a sense of needing to be right in the middle, right here now, because he's also the God of doorways. And you're going to see that by being in the moment and respecting and honoring your past and your future, that by being in the moment, whilst you know respecting and honoring both time periods, you are going to be embracing yourself. You're going to be embracing your now. And this leads you to the koi fish spirit, which is representative standing in for the salmon spirit, which is of rebirth, moving forward, happiness, eternal life, and the connection with feminine energy. And here it says there is always enough. So here with such a positive representation and the fact that people who have the salmon as their spirit animal are led forward in fulfillment of love and a love and a vibrance for life, to know that there is always enough is something that is going to be truly powerful for you. Because what you're doing here during this time and during this moon is that you, at your heart, is like, I've been betrayed and I'm going to have to face a battle. And I know that's not what you want. You're probably sitting there and going, thanks a lot, Dane. You know, this is exactly what I do not want. I want to move forward towards what I love, towards happiness and joy. And this is really looking at your heart and your mind and how your heart is connecting to your mind because you have been betrayed. You have been betrayed by somebody who is supposed to have your back. It can be an ex, you know, that just absolutely did you wrong. It can be a parent. It can be a teacher. It can be whomever, a friend that you're not friends anymore. And so here with the three of waters, that's just how I see it. It's the person who raised their glass to you, who said, I will celebrate you and didn't. And here with the five of air, there's a fear that that will happen again. It's kind of like, how many times can I lose everything? How many times can I be tested? How many times do I have to fight? How many times do I have to? And you might be feeling like there's something wrong with you. You know, this is your fault. Because the five of swords traditionally represents bad sportsmanship. I don't see that. All right? So in medieval times, which are what the, the cards kind of represent, you would not. You would not sit there, disarm a foe, and then give them back their sword. That was just, that was stupid. That was completely stupid and people would look at you and say well of course he betrayed you you were supposed to annihilate destroy sow the fields with salt and that's what people did and I'm not telling you to do that but I am seeing here it's kind of like with the doubt and fear that you did something wrong sow that seed sow that field with salt so that nothing can grow there ever again the doubt the fear the I could have done better if only I could go back in time no it's done and lay it to rest Know the power of your mind. Know the power of your truth. And embrace your heart's love because you're a better person than that person was. And that's just the end of the story. And it leads you to the two of swords. It leads you to seeing things differently as you move forward in the power of your presence, in the messages that you are getting from the divine to guide you forward to where you need to be and where, quite frankly, you want to be as an individual. The two of swords is a sense of you see two roads laid before you. You're not really that keen on either one of them, to be honest with you. But it's by connecting with your emotional self. It's by you know being blindfolded and just simply connecting with you that you see yourself moving towards the goal that you want. You see kind of a new pathway open up. And that leads you to being the defender of what you want, to being the knight of yourself, the defender of prosperity, the embrace of wealth, the person who changes the game, and that's what you're doing. You are changing the game toward, for yourself during this time of visionary, of being a visionary, of being surrounded by clarity. And what's so cool is that with you represented here as a knight, you know, the, this moon, okay, is represented, Sagittari Sagittarius is connected to the goddess Artemis, all right? So here you are connected to the goddess Artemis, which is a symbol of freedom and independence, you know, a goddess of freedom and independence, a goddess of the hunt, but also a goddess of the moon. So here you are going to find yourself connecting really powerfully to this moon and really moving yourself forward and claiming your, what you want, your independent want for your life, yourself, and really being in the zone of where you want to be. It's like you're breaking out of your comfort zone and you're saying, it's my time to take control of my world. And as I do so, you're going to find that the vampiric energy that has held you back, and it's held you back prosperly, 
all right? Or it's made you look at prosperity, prosperity in a very odd way. And it doesn't have to be like astoundingly odd. It can just be like there's an underlying fear to it or there's a sense that I have to prove myself with it. And here, Taurus, you're really looking at things and being like, you know what, forget this. I am not going to let this be my narrative, my truth, my, <coughs> my sense of self anymore. I'm not going to let it strangle me. Because as you claim where you need to be and as you claim what you want, you're going to see that that which had drained you, that which had made you feel less than, is no longer part of you, all right? So there's a sense here. Now, it can be from a person, an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, an Aquarius, or somebody who was astoundingly immature in their mindset. You know, they just, they just saw things a very selfish, self-centered, egotistical way, and you're done. Now, it can even be another earth sign energy coming into play. You know, strong connection here with Capricorn. So it could be a Capricorn, quite literally. But there is this sense here. And you might be seeing this in, in July. You might be seeing a shift in July that really has you moving towards what you desire, what you want, and moving away from what has you held back. And it has you claiming love, joy, prosperity, success. It has you claiming a radiance that you, again, might have questioned. You're not really going to see this within yourself right away. You're going to think, oh, you know, I've made a big deal out of nothing or I, I really can't get what I, I love or what I want or, you know, not everybody understands. They don't have to. They don't have to. They can have their opinions on what you believe in. And you get to have your own. And you shine with a radiant beauty and a profound truth that becomes a part of you and that is an everlasting source of you. And so this radiance guides you forward, this sense of beauty, this sense of wealth, this sense of power. And it leads you to the page of air, which is an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. It's being a student of your mind. It's clarity coming in, but also a lot of questions, a lot of kind of like whys and how comes and digging deeper. And so here with the page of air, you are going to see that as you connect with what you mentally want, all right, you're looking at your mental goals and you have to equate that back to your heart because I am of the firm belief that we are all emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we can't just simply be logic. Being logic takes away our expression, our emotion, our beautiful humanity, at least in my opinion. And so here, there is the sense of as you connect with your, your mental self, as you become a student of what you mentally desire and the way that you want to move forward, you become... A, a student of your heart and you see how your heart and your mind come together. You see how your emotions drive your thoughts and how your thoughts impact your emotions, you know, but I really see it as it's all coming from your heart and you're becoming a student of the way they both connect and how they feed each other and how they feed you. And so here, as you're getting mental clarity, you're connecting with your heart self and with your heart's truth. You're moving away from preconceived notions. And it's like you're not moving away from the wisdom that you've connected with and that you've accumulated over your life. You're moving away from a sense of, I already know what's going to happen. And you're opening up your mind to always learning, always expanding, always growing. And as you do so, there is a sense with the Wheel of Fortune, with Fortune's Wheel, that everything is changing. You know, that life is doing you know, you're going from here and you're going right here. So you're doing a complete 180. You're at a completely different spot. But also you're doing a 360. If you look at the traditional understanding of 360, where like it's a whole new circle, it's a whole new world, it's a whole new sphere for which you are embodying, embracing, and moving forward in. But you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride while you're embracing this change and while you're looking at things so differently than before. And as you embrace this change and as you look at things differently, you embrace a new you because you've shed a cycle. You've shed a cycle because you've claimed your power. And with the five of air, it's a sense of freedom. It's also a sense of something that you thought would take forever and ever to resolve itself, coming to a conclusion rather quickly. Well, more quickly than you had anticipated. It might not be, be fast at all, though, because spirit works in a different time way of looking at things than we do. And it leads you to this sense of knowing that all is flux and nothing stays the same, that life is constantly changing and will be constantly changing forever and forevermore. And you embrace that. And as you embrace that change, it's like that understanding takes away and hacks away 
at this vampiric energy, this sense of I have to hold on to what I have because if I don't, I'll never have it again. It's already knowing here, it's really connecting with the salmon. I'm just seeing you really connecting with the spa salmon spirit energy of rebirth, of moving forward in happiness and enlightened life and this feminine love. It doesn't have to be feminine love. Like, you know, you don't have to be attracted to women at all or be a woman yourself. It is just this sense of connecting with Mother Earth, connecting with this energy of creation that's really going to be a powerful force for you to connect with what you want to create within this world. And it leads you to the world opening up as the limitations start falling away. And as you connect with the world, you connect with higher power, higher truth, a greater way of seeing things. You connect with a, a sense of moving towards something more. And the limitations that were put on you are not the limitations that you perpetually see. So what I mean is that, you know, you had thought certain doors were closed to you. And that's just what we think sometimes. You know, we sit there and think, oh, well, that's great for somebody, but I'm not that pretty. I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. I'm not that this. I'm not that that. You know, it can't be for me. And you're going to start to see that you had a misconception of yourself and you were wrong. And so here with the world, the world opens up to you because you open up to the world. You open up to the world of your endless possibilities. And it doesn't mean that you can do absolutely anything that you set your mind to. Because you know what, sometimes you're just not good at it. It's kind of like, if I dedicated myself to being you know, a fantastic singer, I'm not a very good singer, you know? So I might be mediocre at best. You know, you could have a career kind of like sing, talk, like kind of like a Johnny Cash thing, but you'd have to be astoundingly lucky to fall into that, that way of being. So here it's not saying that absolutely anything in the whole entire world is open to you. It's looking at your strengths. It's looking at yourself. And it's also not pigeonholing yourself and saying, I'm opening the door. Now you might say, okay, Dane, you just pigeonholed yourself by saying, I'm, I'm not really good at this. But spirit is saying to have a balance with yourself of what you know is a strength and what you know is a weakness. So there's just something here that says, have this understanding with you and be kind to yourself as you're moving forward because you're looking at the two of wands, the two of fire, and you're looking at you know, the way that you want to move forward and you're going to start to see as the world opens, you're starting to see the world open up to yourself and this is another doorway for you. The, the two of air was the doorway to create your own path. Here is the doorway to create your own passion, your own intuitive desire for the future. And as you do so, you become a messenger of what you want, of what you desire. And you look at the pains, the hardships, the disappointments that you've had in your life. And you say, it's funny, it's like, I, I'm not destroyed. I'm not destroyed. I am not held back. I am, it's almost like you're a hellcat, you know, it's like, I got this and I, I am going to go after what it is that I want. And if you come across, you know, again, people who raise their cup to you in celebration, but don't mean it, it's not going to be as devastating because you, you know that mainly, and it, it sounds, it sounds sad to say that mainly you rely on yourself, but it's like nobody has that power to make you fail or to have you fail because you've already been hurt and you've come through the other side. And that is something that's absolutely beautiful. And it leads you to this courage, to this sense of, I will be moving forward and I will not be stopped. And let's see how Luna, you know, how the moon correlates with your, with your tarot, what it has to add. How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the June 2020 full moon? 
Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right, so at the center of everything, well, actually, let's just start off right here because this just drew, drew me in right away, the South Knot. And it says, don't let your past hold you back. And it's with the shifting towards your future, an end of a cycle and moving towards what you want. There is something that has happened and you carry the wound with you. And it's time to say, you know, wounds are, are fine. You know, don't be ashamed of them. But it's time to say, I am moving towards what I want and I will not be held back by my past any longer. And I set myself free. It's like you're anointing yourself with this freedom. And it leads you to a patience with yourself. It's like, yeah, okay? It's like teaching a kid how to walk, you know, or hold a spoon or something like that. And you're sitting there and you're like, wow, that takes, that takes patience. I didn't realize that that would take patience, but it does. And so it's having patience with yourself. It's having that same patience that you would have for a small child for yourself because you've been hurt, you've been burnt before, and now you have to have the patience to move forward into the unknown. And when you've been burnt before, when you've known pain and disappointment and hurt and hardships and despair, to move forward and say, well, this isn't going to define me, I, I'm, I'm going to keep on moving towards my goals, it, it's astoundingly hard. Very few people can do it you know, and not carry scars with them. Very few. So here, it's having patience with yourself as you follow what you desire because you then move to the full moon in Gemini. The answers you need are coming. As you stand your ground and fight for what you want, as you know that you can withstand others' naysaying, others' disappointment, other people's, you know, it's, it's stupidity. And it's saying, I'm not being rude or mean or, you know, manipulative. I am being strong for myself. Because if you can be strong for everybody else, Taurus, why can't you be strong for you? Which then leads you to attraction. It leads you to the supermoon, which is the first time, okay, which is funny. This is the first moon reading in like four moon readings where the supermoon has not been been there, been in, in the lineup. And here it still comes through for you because you're attracting to yourself. Your law of attraction, your, your power of creation is so absolutely powerful during this time. The, the first steps towards your hero's journey, towards your quest of self and life and joy and, and beauty is just so powerful that it's calling to you. And it's calling to you as you're blindfolded, looking at the path that you want to walk. And as you look at this path that you want to walk and as you call on it, it leads you to the full moon in Libra. A win-win outcome is forecast as you fight for your right, as you stand your ground, as you are a knight, a defender of what you desire, need, want, and love. And then it moves you to embracing your will, your strength. And as you embrace your will, you find that your will is stronger than other people's negativity than this vampiric energy that is around you. And it might have taken years upon years, decades upon decades, for you to become stronger than them, but you are. Which then leads you to having faith in your dreams as you embrace what you love. You have to have faith in your dreams. You have to have faith in yourself or else it's all going to be worthless. Have faith in your dreams, have faith in you because it moves you to an acceptance, an acceptance of the world around you, but also an acceptance of your truth, of what you want from life. As you become a student of your mind, of clear thinking, of you know insights and passion and power, which then leads you to not letting your past hold you back and embracing the change, the beauty, the, the majesty of your future. The answers you need are coming. Have faith in your dreams. You might even find that they come to you in your dreams. Self-love is important. Oh, goodness. Also, is me toppling the cards. So self-love is going to be 
important for you as you move forward and as the world opens up. Because the world more than willing to shoot you down, more than willing to say, oh no, you just don't belong here. But if you have that love for yourself, that passion, that beauty, that understanding of self, you move forward into success, embracing success, success and having it be a part of you. But it comes first by loving who you are. Not all the time. It doesn't mean that you have to love yourself all the time. But it does mean that you have to, you have, to have that energy around you. You do. This moves you to working through your fears as you embrace the Scorpio full moon. And as you work through your fears, you're seeing doorways open. You're seeing avenues open up that you thought could never, it could never be. And as the doorways open up, and as you work past your fears that have been holding you back, and it can't even be the fear of self-love, the fear of truly loving, of truly loving you, because there might have been, you know, negativity spoken over you that says, well, you just weren't enough. And what makes you think you have the right to think you are? I mean, that's a jerk person right there. So here, you know, that's in your head, you know, trying to, to rip you down. That's vampiric energy coming forward. So here with the full moon in Libra, a win-win outcome is forecast as you embrace your passion, as you move forward in your determination, as you embrace your wealth. Now, here's the thing. And I want to step back and say this because when spirit says that you can accomplish absolutely anything, they mean for your path, all right? They mean that in this world that sets us with limitations, that sets us with, you know, these preconceived notions, everything like that, that kind of sometimes feels like it sets us up to fail. You can accomplish what you put your mind through too and break down and break through the barriers that they've set up for you. But you also have to know your skills and your talents and not sit there and try and try and try to make yourself into something you're not. It's kind of like, that's where I use the analogy of me becoming a singer. It's like, it's just never going to happen. It really isn't. So here, it's like, if I walk down that path, it would lead me straight to failure. So be open and honest with yourself and with your visionary you know, influence that is around you, with your visionary mind and your hero's journey towards your life purpose. Be open with yourself and don't try to go after somebody else's dreams because they told you that you should or they wanted you to be what they couldn't be. This leads you to the answers you need coming as you face something that you would rather not face, as you embrace you in a very true and honest way. Your subconscious message for this time is call, is judgment in the right of Smith deck. It is your angels calling you towards your higher purpose, towards your greater passion. And as you embrace this call, as you embrace this, this knowledge and this, and this beauty, as you move forward towards the love of your angels, towards the love of yourself, You move into balance. Luna is saying you move into balance. Your subconscious Luna message is you move into balance as you see that a new romantic cycle opens as you have the strong Libra presence within this reading. Okay, now, because you have the new moon in Libra and the new moon, the, the full moon in Libra and the new moon in Libra, you have a new romantic cycle starting and a win-win outcome is forecast. So have balance. Because new doors, new loves, new passions, new beauties are coming into your life. And things won't be the same. And you're not going to want them to be. All right, Taurus. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May you have a blessed moon. I love you all. And I hope you all are staying safe. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. Bye.